Okay, if you're currently not completely addicted to Mario Maker 2 on your Switch, which I know that's the only reason I've been turning my console on over the last few days, and you're still looking for a bunch more really cool eShop games to download and start playing, well, I got you covered with 10 really cool ones in this video. Now, usually when I make videos like this, and I have made a lot of them, I think this is number like 15, I really have lost count. It's like 150 eShop games, I don't even want to think about it. Usually it isn't this hard to pick just 10 games to go on the list, but there has been so many releases on the Switch recently, I just didn't even know where to begin. There are a bunch of games I wanted to talk about today that got left out. So it looks like I'll have to do another one of these pretty soon, but let's not worry about that one because we're currently in this one. So let's focus on today's games. I hope you find something you might want to go download and play, or if not, I hope you still just have a good time in this video. And if you do, remember to smash that like button here, flip all over the subscribe button, and let's just jump right into talking about some really cool Switch games. First up on the list, and honestly, this entire video wouldn't have been possible without Catan or Catan. I'm Australian and pronounce everything backwards, so it probably is Catan, but I would say Catan. <laughs> the wonderful people over at Asmodee Digital are sponsoring me today, which is so freaking cool, because it's not that often an actual Switch game sponsors the channel. And have you ever seen a more on-brand sponsor? Unless you're watching like a makeup channel and they get sent makeup, which is pretty common. But this is literally my version of that. Oh, and I sunk a ton of time into this game once they reached out to me. I'll be honest, I didn't have much interest in Catan before they did reach out to me to do this sponsor And even when they did reach out to me, I'll be even more honest I took a look at it and even then thought I, I really don't know if this is gonna gel with me guys But they gave me a code for it I downloaded the game and instantly I got hooked called them up on my cell phone and said hey Yeah, I'm in Actually, I don't have their phone number. I sent them an email, but you get the point. This game is brutally hard, unless I just suck at it, which is a real possibility, but that challenge can be addicting. It plays like a board game on a hexagon-based grid. At the start of the game, you have to pick where you want to place your first two settlements, then on each player turn, you and your opponents all roll dice. No matter whose turn it is, if you're touching the number tile that's rolled, you get the resources that match that tile. The aim of the game is to use those resources to build more settlements, cities, roads, boats, you name it. Everything of that nature you build, you earn a point for, and then the first person to reach a certain point goal wins. But the real fun and frustration comes in trading resources. You won't always have exactly what you need, so you'll have to trade with other players. It's always a scary balance between getting the stuff you need and not giving your enemies too much of the stuff they need at the same time. And that mechanic reminds me of Monopoly and what makes that game so fun to play with friends. The rounds of Catan can last over 15 minutes, so losing is always an upset, and yet I consistently found myself loading the match back up and trying again. It's kind of worrying how much time you can sink into the game. Oh, and by the way, this is all things that I wanted to say, my experience with the game that I wrote down in my script and not what I was told to say. But there are a couple things they needed me to mention, so let's do that. This is the ultimate digital version of Catan, integrating modern art, enhanced graphics, and a reinvented UI. It's an easy to learn game, and that's true even though it's, you know, still hard. <laughs> that includes a full 26 scenario campaign with immersive replayability through all the expansions. Catan even has online modes and leaderboards. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link for the game down in the description, so please clicky clacky tappy on that before you leave this video today. And if you feel like you get good at the game, hit me up on Twitter because I need some good competition other than the AI, which kick my butt every single time I play. The original Devil May Cry is a game that I have rebought time and time again, and if I wasn't lazy, I could go behind me and find every copy I have, and it's every copy that was ever released. And I'm not sure what even needs to be said about Devil May Cry to convince anyone that it's worth a buy. I love this game, I clearly always have, and I always will. It was the very first hack and slash I ever played, and I would probably say that hack and slashes grew to become my favorite genre of video games, so I guess I owe that to Devil May Cry. It's a big fat 20 bucks on the eShop, which some people pointed out is high, considering there is a HD collection triple pack for just 30 bucks on other systems. Which yeah, I get, but I mean, selling this game at 10 bucks seems low comparatively to other budget games on the eShop. At least it isn't a whopping $30 like Resident Evil 4 is. But in any case, in Devil May Cry you play as Dante, a half human, half demon man who hunts evil demons for a living. This gameplay in the first game is timeless 
flawless and will never disappoint. While newer Devil May Cry games have improved on the base formula, they have never strayed too far away from the original because it really is near perfect. The cutscenes are a special kind of crazy, the action is fast paced stupid fun, the boss battles are epic, and this is just my kind of game. Alright, I recently reviewed Cadence of Hyrule in my video all about Switch games I can't stop playing, which was true until Mario Maker came out. And then that just changed everything. <laughs> but regardless of that, Cadence of Hyrule will still end up in my top 5 Switch games of 2019 for sure. So I won't repeat myself. If you want to watch my review of the game, you can go ahead and click here. Or there'll be a link down below or a link at the end of the video. Just don't leave just yet. Finish this one and then watch that one. And if you've already seen it, um, just smash that like button, I guess. And, um... Subscribe. The reason why I'm still counting it as one of the games on this video is, again, I like these lists to be like my all-inclusive. I have talked about it and reviewed it on one of my eShop lists. Kind of like, it, it's become canon for me, I guess. So I need it to be included, but I've already talked about it. I don't like repeating myself. My friend Pedro has easily solidified itself as one of my favorite indie games of the year. And since it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive, unless you count PC, which who does? It's also easy to see why this game is a must buy. In My Friend Pedro, you play as a masked assassin, armed with as many guns as he can carry, the ability to fire those guns while simultaneously hanging upside down, and a severe lack of knowledge on how physics actually work. But physics be damned, this is just straight up fun. It's hard to not have a great time while Max Payne slow mo mowing down countless enemies, but somehow My Friend Pedro manages to make that concept even more enjoyable. Every level throws something new at you, new mechanics, whether it's a frying pan that you can kick right at an enemy's face and then pump that same frying pan full of bullets ricocheting off of it and hitting every other enemy in the room, or jumping on a freaking skateboard and rocketing through levels while pumping shotgun rounds. Oh, and beyond the senseless violence, there actually is quite a bit of clever platforming and puzzle solving going on throughout the levels, with some of the later areas of the game becoming quite the brain teaser. But again, something this game manages to do so well is just make every single thing feel fresh and enjoyable and nothing ever feels like a task you have to complete. Rather, it's always something you want to be doing. Brilliant game design. It's a simple concept and they really fleshed it out and absolutely nailed it. Oh, and uh, your friend is literally a banana. So there's that. <laughs> Is bananas B A N A N A S. During Square Enix's E3 conference, they decided to just drop the last remnant on the Switch that night, which came completely out of nowhere for me. It's a JRPG I really liked on my 360, but I never finished. So I immediately like a week later when I remembered that I forgot to buy it off the eShop, downloaded the game and got to play it. And while I still haven't finished this one yet, I do have some choice thoughts to share about it. Honestly, I don't really care much for the story, but to be fair, I barely ever do in most JRPGs. The gameplay, however, is pretty cool. You don't just control one character, rather you control a bunch of different characters on a battlefield, which makes the battling in this game feel more action-y than most of your standard stand in a line and wait your turn JRPGs. RPGs. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just different. So while you're controlling your army on the battlefield, you also have to take into consideration military tactics when deciding on your next move and even deal with some light quick time eventing. This game isn't without its flaws and honestly the game does need more color, it looks pretty droll. Which was an issue for a lot of games in general on that generation of consoles. But it's a solid RPG that hardcore JRPG fans will have a great time adding to their RPG library. RPG. I've been playing so much Mario Maker recently that my Switch is about to die. Usually I always keep this bad boy uh, juiced up for emergencies, but Mario Maker is always an emergency. I don't think much needs to be said about Collection of Mana on Switch, but you know, your boy had to at least talk about- Why did I just call myself your boy? I don't think there's too much that needs to be said about this game. However, I always forget that Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is technically a mana game and therefore it's in this pack. Oh, and that the physical version of this is coming in August. So really this game only counts on this list for like another month since it's supposed to be digital only games. Oh, and Secret of Mana is for 
sure one of the best Super Nintendo games ever made. I mean, Earthbound and Link to the Past being the best of the best, and then games like Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger being almost as good, but still pretty freaking good, and being able to play it on Switch alongside Trials of Mana, which we never had officially released outside of Japan until now, is really cool. <sighs> well, I guess there is actually quite a lot to say about the collection of Mana. <laughs> if you didn't know, these Mana games are actually really great to play in co-op too. They play very similar to Link to the Past, but with a real-time JRPG combat element spliced in. In Secret of Mana, the adventure has you playing as a young boy, who accidentally stumbles upon a legendary sword that no one else has been able to wield until now, but you know, he needed it to cut some grass, so... His hometown villagers then get all superstitious and stupid and kick you and the demon sword the heck out of town before someone or something smites them. And after that, it's just a matter of staying alive and defeating evil. And once I've finally beaten that evil, I'll let you know what Trials of Mana is all about because I still haven't played that one. I'm actually waiting for the remake. I first played the game Brothers when Metal Jesus Rocks lent me his PlayStation 4 copy for a couple weeks back when I lived in Seattle. He wouldn't stop raving about it, so I just had to play it. It's made by Hazelight Studios, if you uh, remember this guy from the Game Awards that one year. They seem to have a love for co-op style games as they went on to make A Way Out, a game that I really enjoyed and you could only play it with two players. Brothers is also co-op, well, co-op with yourself. You control both Nai and Naya. The left analog stick will move one brother and the right will move the other. The act of controlling both brothers at once is actually really intuitive and fluid. The gameplay will obviously have you using both brothers to solve puzzles and platform throughout the world, while you attempt to find a cure for your sick father. Now, it's not really a visually gorgeous game, but it is a charming, whimsical adventure with a unique gameplay mechanic that will leave a lasting impression on you. I had a lot of fun playing Metal Jesus' copy of the game years ago, and I had a lot of fun replaying it recently. Oh, and you do have the option of playing a proper official co-op for the first time ever in this Switch version. However, I don't really recommend it. Since it was designed for just one player, I would honestly stick with that. Controlling just one of these brothers at a time is exactly half the fun of controlling both of them at once. With a name like Hugh, it's not a surprise that I love the bright use of colors in this game. And ironically, my Switch actually did just die. So it's, it's completely black. Hugh Hugh is a linear Metroidvania adventure that reminds me of Limbo, or rather in a way, like the opposite of Limbo, as this game is bursting with bright colors and not so creepy moments. Throughout the game, you'll select different colors from your wheel here that will change the background of the level to whatever hue you select. Changing up between colors will reveal secrets, doors, platforms, and more that you couldn't see before. On top of that, it also affects the world around you. Switch to a color of an object that was already there that might erase it from existence, if only momentarily, but it could affect the level by triggering traps or being used to solve puzzles. It's a short game, so I'm gonna keep this short. If you like games like Limbo or Braid, Hugh might also enjoy this game. All right, moving on. If my Switch wasn't dead, you would see Skelly Quest right here. <laughs> and with Skelly Quest being so freaking similar to Enter the Gungeon, a game I love, I'm really not sure how I missed this one on the eShop until now. So you have a couple modes here. One where you have to slash away at rooms of enemies until they die dead. Then you can move on to the next room and do it all over again. Or a mode where you have a little more freedom to roam around the dungeon, killing things as you please. In both modes, you'll find upgrades as you play that level you up in many a different ways, making you a more efficient killing machine. Your main two weapons are a Kratos-style axe and a gun that recharges its shots on your axe kills. And I really dig the visual style on this one, even if your main guy kind of looks like a, a chubby naked mole rat rather than an actual demon skeleton. Now for everything I've talked about so far, for 10 bucks I would say maybe that price point is pushing it. Maybe it should be cheaper or wait for a sale, but wait! There's more. There's actually a whole nother mode I didn't talk about, a card game mode. It's completely separate from the main game, although you can earn items for your game on victories. And yeah, this is just a pretty cool little card game that's really fun. For a budget title, there's actually a lot to offer here in Skelly Quest. I'm so annoyed that I didn't charge it. <laughs> Manicute has a very interesting concept that I haven't seen done before. Although it does have similarities to games like Katamari, and I guess in a way, Pikmin? You control a herd of angry but cute rioters that just destroy everything that get in their way. What do we want, destruction? When do we want it? Whenever we finish the other game we're playing so we can delete it and make room on our Switch to actually download this one. But as soon as we've done 
that destruction! It honestly is a very Nintendo feeling game. I love grouping up a large crowd and just tipping over entire buildings like they're nothing. You can unlock new characters and new abilities. There's actually quite a lot of levels with a ton of variation between them and some really great boss battles. Actually, there was honestly a lot of games I wanted to put in this video and one of them I really wanted to talk about was Darkwood. But I felt we already had a lot of darker, methodical, violent games and we could just use something bright, bubbly and cutesy instead. Although this mob is pretty violent, look at them! <laughs> if you enjoy either Katamari or Donut County, you might also enjoy Anacute. Alright guys, there's another 10 I can check off my canon list of eShop games I put into these videos. I love making these videos, I feel like it's my only true, like, series that I do on the channel. Don't forget to click that link down below and check out Catan. I know we saw a lot of really great games today, but Catan is the one that sponsored the video. It's a really great game, fun to play with friends, and you clicking on that link and actually checking it out, it helps me, it helps the channel. So, if you don't know what one to buy, I would definitely start with that one. It helps me out. It's a fun game. What more do you need? It's a win 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 win. It's like seven wins. Just get it. Thanks to Asmodi Digital for sponsoring the video. If you liked the video, then you better have actually liked it, because that just makes sense. Hair flip all over the subscribe button. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to put this bad boy back on charge. Actually, I need to reconnect this stupid flimsy kickstand that always falls off and uh, play some more Mario Maker 2. All right, that's my life. Bye.